So the question comes up, why exactly does a silencer reduce recoil? And that's an excellent question, and I've seen a lot of theories about it. From the weight of the firearm to some sort of parachute effect. Well, let's get into it. What is the mechanics behind this? To the whiteboard of knowledge. Alright, so you fire your projectile, it moves down the bore, passes through the silencer, it ultimately exits. Now you don't get a recoil unless it's a really long barrel with a really big bore diameter, like say, I don't know, 50 cal. But that's only because it's pushing air in front of it and you will get a little bit of recoil before the firearm exits the projectile. That's the only example I know of. The projectile moving down the bore itself doesn't cause recoil and you know this for sure because when you're shooting long range, if you grip your rifle too tight, you can see your heartbeat in the scope. And you'll have terrible accuracy. So if you were getting any kind of recoil whatsoever on the firearm before the projectile exited, you're not going to be able to hold a group. At like maybe 75 yards, you might be able to hold a group if you're touching the firearm on a bench and you got it like ratchet strapped down. But otherwise, it would be impossible to hold any sort of precision group with a firearm if you were getting recoil acting on the firearm before the projectile actually exits. I believe, now I'm not some super genius with all the testing equipment to prove this, but I believe because the projectile is still encased inside the firearm, it's similar to like when you're cruising down the interstate at, I don't know, any number, 150, but you're not accelerating and you toss a ball up, it doesn't instantly get glued to the back windshield. Because a projectile is inside the firearm, it's covered by, uh, I'm going to make shit up here, it's sphere of influence. So therefore, you don't get any recoil until the projectile exits, except for the air the projectile is pushing, because obviously that's coming out of the bore before the projectile exits, so there is a small amount of recoil from that, but I believe it's completely negligible on everything except for like a 50 cal with a 30 inch barrel. So what's actually causing the recoil? That would be thrust. I'll post the mathematical equation right here because that's a little bit above my pay grade, but the simple way of looking at it, thrust is volume plus velocity. Like that's where you're gonna get your thrust from. Now when it comes to the weight of the silencer slowing the recoil down, that's just not true. Say this rifle weighed three ton, but it was not touching the ground at all. There was no bipod, it was magically floating in the air. And I got behind this rifle and fired it, I'm gonna feel the same recoil as if this rifle weighs one pound. Why is that? Because of physics. Equal and opposite reaction. If there's a force pushing forward, the equal force has to push rearward. Now the weight of the firearm will change the characteristics of what the recoil feels like. It can change it from a snap to a push, but the actual energy measured coming out of the back of it, regardless what the weight is, is gonna be the exact same. Now that does change when the rifle has contact with the ground through a bipod or a monopod or something like that, because then the weight is holding on the ground and the ground is slowing you down. But if it's not touching the ground, regardless what the rifle weighs, if I'm just standing there shouldering it, even if it weighs the same as a semi-truck, the amount of energy pushing rearward is going to be the same whether that's one pound or 30 ton. It doesn't really matter. <sighs> See, that gets weird too because yes, Ideally, you know, with something really heavy, it's going to take up a lot of space, so there's going to be a bunch of air resistance on it. But we're going to pretend like this is a magic rifle with a dial on it where I can change the weight and it will float, or the mass of the rifle. So it's not changing in size, it's just increasing in weight. No, that doesn't re reduce the recoil at all. So typically on a silenced weapon, unless, of course, the bipod is touching the ground, you will get zero recoil reduction from the weight of the silencer. Where you will get your recoil reduction is by reducing or changing the direction of the velocity. For example, on this brake right here, the gas comes out and then it's got these ports facing this way. So what it's going to do is change the thrust from going straight out to off to the side and then make it act against each other. Because the gases will come out from both sides, they'll push in on this muzzle brake because they're equal coming out of both sides. It cancels out cancels them out and hopefully I can scavenge enough of those gases to prevent the gases from going out the bore. You're still going to get some that come out of the bore regardless. This is just the way the world works. But 
I'm going to scavenge as much as possible and then make those forces act against each other. And that's where you'll get your recoil reduction inside of a muzzle brake. Inside of a silencer, it's a little bit different. So what a silencer is doing is it's reducing the overall volume coming out the end. Now, obviously, the projectile itself has volume to it, so you can never get rid of 100% of the recoil, but we're just trying to reduce the volume of gases coming out. So what's going to happen as the projectile passes down your can, like so, it's going to fill each and every one of these chambers because the gas is going to follow the projectile. It's going to fill this chamber and give the gas time to cool down. Then it's going to fill this chamber, give the gas time to cool down, and that's going to repeat all the way to the end. This way, when the projectile exits, the gas behind it is going to take up less space. You can test this yourself if you would like. Take an empty soda bottle, put the cap on it, and put it in the freezer. A few hours, you'll pull it out, and the soda bottle will be collapsed down. Or you can take a collapsed soda bottle, put the cap on it, and warm that bottle up and it will pop up to its normal size. That's because cold air takes up less space than hot air does. So what you're doing is you're cooling the air down so there's less air coming out the end and that's where you're going to get your recoil reduction. You're simply reducing the amount of air that comes out. So the gases will slow down because there will be less of them, less pressure, less thrust coming out of the end. Because that's what a silencer does. Normally your projectile moves down the bore. Once it exits, because there's so much hot gases, that's where you get the huge bang from. Because those hot gases hitting the cool air at such a rapid rate. Think of it like a nuclear bomb. Like the nuclear bomb goes off, boom! You see this huge shockwave go out. And then you see a wind come back in and collapse down because it's cooled down in space. So it's taking up less space, creating a vacuum. So it sucks all that wind in. All you're doing with the silencer is you're cooling down the gases so there's not as much and it's at a lower velocity coming out the end. Again, even without the velocity thing being a part of the equation, there's going to be a lot less gas coming out. Remember, all this gas fit inside of the cartridge. Like, that's a really small space. There's not a whole lot of gas in there. The gas is created from heat and expansion. So you're given that time for the heat to dissipate and the expansion to go away. So when the projectile comes out, it doesn't have a whole bunch of thrust behind it. You're, one of the side effects is you reduce recoil, but the main thing is to bring the sound down. So it doesn't just as it exits the bore. So why exactly does a silencer reduce recoil? Because it simply reduces the amount of gas coming out. So that is the answer to the question. No, it's not because the silencer puts weight on it. No, it's not because there's forward thrust pushing on the back of the silencer, which counteracts it, because if that was the case, you wouldn't be able to hit shit with the silencer because it would move your sights off of alignment. It pressurizes each chamber equally as a projectile moves down. Because the gas has time to cool, there will be less gas coming out the end because colder air takes up less space than hot air. Anyway, uh, thank you for watching. Like to help support the channel, go on Patreon down there. I also have affiliate links in the description down below. Just by going down there and clicking on those links, even if you don't purchase what that particular item is, or an item out of that store, just by clicking on it, before you do the Amazon shopping you were already going to do anyway, I had a little kickback for it because you came there off my channel. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.